which is the proposed agreement for fire chief officer services as provided by City of San Rafael. And that's uh, um, action item. So, um, Eric, would you like to start us off? Yeah, uh, you know, Chief Roach and I have been working at a staffing level with the City of San Rafael uh, based on the City of San Rafael's request, following up some of the initial meetings. I've been working a lot on kind of the operational aspect, which has been a lot uh, more of Chief Roach and Chief Gray getting together, um, as well as kind of some of the bigger picture and you know uh, having other more existential conversations around it um, from an operational standpoint and through the conversations that uh, considering uh, the Chief Roach be gone and I was the one working with them, I, I certainly feel confident that this proposal, as well as their abilities. Uh, completely satisfied the operational and administrative needs of our fire department. Uh, and that Santa Fe Fire Department understands our department well and is fully capable of assuming such a role in a manner that I believe would be seamless to our residents served. Um, I, you know, I have no doubt there'll be uh, some hiccups and some uh, growing pains per se in working with them, uh, you know, from an administrative uh, management kind of high level. Um, Ideally, if this is approved, there's still time here for the chief and them to work cohabitively for a much smoother transition. Um, but in working with their department, uh, I believe Chief Gray was uh, uh, listened to what our needs were and did his best to address them. With that said, this does cause an amendment to the current shared services agreement because that are primarily some language cleanup up items. Um, because there would have been some conflicting terms in here between that, uh, for instance, the chief uh, was mentioned in this plenty, uh, our fire chief was mentioned in this plenty, which we would no longer have. Uh, there were some issues with cross-staffing, considering uh, mostly when San Rafael cross-staffs or works our uh, department, uh, technically their, their chief officer would still be their direct employers and those. So we had to clean up some of that language that was within the shared services agreement, uh, uh, which is why they made this as a first amendment and then a separate attachment and exhibit B to address strictly the chief officer services. Um, and just for review for the public, um, the, um, there was a, a special committee formed to explore um, several options that um, were out there. Um, there were um, conversations with other entities um, to gauge their interest to take on the uh, chief service um, for us. And um, there was no interest. Um, we also realized that uh, um, a part-time chief position uh, brings uh, implied uh, liability with the legal limit of 1,000 hours annually. Um, so we are basically looking at um, this agreement as um, our only option. Um, comments from the board or questions from the board? I have some. <clears throat> San Rafael is nothing but op opportunistic. They place considerable financial value on their services while completely ignoring the value of the services that we provide them. The shared services agreement that we that is now in its fourth year <clears throat> is financially and operationally slanted in San Rafael's favor, the only <clears throat> and single most important attribute of that shared services agreement was to get local paramedic service in Marin with. We have yet, even though it's not through San Rafael's influence, we have yet to realize that attribute. Further, the exhibits that were um, forwarded with this agreement are either already available to us in the shared services agreement, but implied that they're going to be given to us now um, for a fee. There's certain um, overlap on several of these items, um, just saying the same thing in two different ways. Um, some level of effort, 
some of the items, the level of effort that's going to be expended by anyone from San Rafael would have been expended for their position in San Rafael anyway. Um, again, not a value add. <clears throat> um, operationally, um, yes, I can see that there may be some value from having them um, come aboard and manage um, our fire department. But financially, this is not a good deal at all. Um, we are talking about $96 an hour at a maximum of 1,000 hours annually for a part-time chief versus about $55 maximum for a full-time chief. On top of that, where is this person going to work? How are we going to know if he's actually spending the time that he's supposed to be spending um, doing what he's, he's um, listed in this exhibit B? <coughs> All I can say is that through certain influences, we were left with a single source, San Rafael. We had no opportunity to speak to other um, entities that may have been interested, and in fact, I'm understanding now that one of those entities has now provided services to another Marin County agency. So maybe they have a problem with Marin with, don't know. but. Um, it certainly would have been nice to have a choice. We had none. <clears throat> Timing is against us. I do not feel, unfortunately, that we can turn this fire department over um, unmanaged by a professional fire chief. So however disappointing it is to have San Rafael once again totally ignore the value of the services that we provide them and ask for money from an organization, an entity that does not have sales tax, that has its own financial problems, um, strikes me as um, parasitic. <clears throat> However, I do not believe we can leave the fire department alone without management. Um, we've already discounted um, having a part-time manager come in, although I think that would be um, preferable. Um, we are where we are, and I'm very disappointed. And all I can say is this, in the very near future, if San Rafael is not willing to come to the table and talk about some means of evening the playing ground, evening the finances between our small community services district and their city, this is going to be a very short-lived agreement. That's all. I have a number of similar comments. I'm going to try not to repeat, but I have the same feeling. Uh, when the board appointed me to the fire commission, probably around two and a half years ago, maybe before. The word was already out, the fire chief was going to retire, and something had to be done to uh, find a replacement. Uh, a committee was appointed by the board. They appear to have spent most of their time trying to figure out who should be on the committee and what general subjects would be discussed and they never really got to discussing the subject, I don't believe. Uh, the other thing is, then when we finally started talking with other agencies, uh, San Rafael being, I suppose, the primary one, they took their sweet time getting back to us. And here we are, mid-September, with the chief saying he wants to be out of here the end of October. That doesn't leave a lot of wiggle room. Uh, so San Rafael's the only game in town today. The, the thing that I asked Eric, and we went back and looked in the current joint powers agreement, there's a 90-day bailout clause. And if that wasn't there, I wouldn't even want to be talking about this now. Because I think we have to do something to make sure we have a fire chief. But we also, as Jeff has said, get San Rafael to the table to talk about the equity of what's going on here. 
But in regard to some of the specifics of this agreement, uh, everything I've heard from the chief and everything, most everything I see physically is we talk about the joint powers area being what we had way back historically, south of Lucas Valley Road to the top of the hill by San Salvador. And now the new JPA, which is everything east of Highway 101, I assume as far south as about Station 3 now. Uh, but there's nothing in the agreement that says that. They can call us anywhere they want, anywhere in the city. And looking at the data the chief supplied me, uh, we went, made 44 calls to the city in the first six months of this calendar year outside of either sort of defined JPAs, uh, where the city, out of the, what I was going to say, out of the their heart, but out of whatever arrangement, they came here six times, and, or maybe it was eight, but some of it was for cover while our guys were training. Well, if that was one training session, that would have been three of those eight covers. If it was two training sessions, it would have been six of those eight covers. And I think the chief said there were three structure fires in those six months where they came in automatically because it was more than a single in response. But my point being uh, that map they're using is a, is a little weird in that it shows the entire city. And in fact, it shows unincorporated areas that isn't even our responsibility or the city's responsibility which is Silvera and St. Vincent's. I mean, I, I guess we go there when we get a call, but that's county responsibility, not ours. Uh, also, in reading the current Joint Powers Agreement, it says they're going to provide a chief officer in a whole bunch of situations dealing with emergencies, not administrative. I think they're double dipping. They're giving it to us free here, and they're charging for it there. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, then technicalities like uh, the uh, Article 4, paragraph II, at the end of five years, if the city determines its costs associated with the provisions of fire chief uh, provided in this agreement exceed then current services, they can raise it. They don't even propose the suggestion. Maybe it's going to be lower. They're only looking to increase. Uh, I don't know, I feel I have to vote for this thing yeah. to keep us in business properly. But uh, not because I like any bit of it. Uh, regretfully, we find ourselves in the same uh, position, all three of us. I, I think that um, whereas we could look at the JPA as hopefully a beginning of a beautiful friendship. Um, for now, I think the situation leads, uh, leaves a lot to be desired. Having said that, um, again, we're, we have no other option. Are we happy with uh, the performance of the committee? I'm not. <coughs> but at the end of the day, we are where we are. And um, so, um, before I open it to the public comment, can we have a motion to approve that? Reluctantly, I will make a motion that we approve the... <coughs> Are you? Sorry. The public speaks after the motion, right? Thank you. So you make a motion. Reluctantly. Any comments? Right. Thank you. That we approve the uh, San Rafael proposal for providing fire chief services in Thank you, Jeff. And I'll reluctantly second. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we'll open the um, issue to public comment at this point. Ron, start us off. Yes, uh, rather than mm -hmm. get into a long discourse, I'll uh, just say I agree with the comments of uh, Commissioners Naylor and Schwartz. And while holding my nose, I see that it's necessary at this time, at this place, that you pass this measure. But also, 
serious consideration and study should be done to find more of a permanent and equitable, equitable should be in capital letters, arrangement for structural fire protection. Yeah, I, I just like to say that I, I, I feel good about this agreement from the stance that when I leave this department, knowing that Sarah Fell is taking over management, that our community will be protected, that their needs will be met. Um, it's my hope that this is actually a bridge agreement. I don't think this is your final solution to fire protection in your neighborhood. Um, yes, I believe those discussions should come with the city of San Rafael sometime within the next five years, sooner, if not rather than later. Um, and I think those are the times where you sit down and have those equity discussions, cost sharing, um, one single fire department, all that good stuff. Thank you, Chief. Anybody else would like to comment on this? Linda? Well, I think the first thing I want to say is um, the ESS committee kind of dropped the ball on more research and more outreach. And I mean, there was like, what, three meetings that they didn't even have and subcommittee meetings that were not um, not scheduled. So I really think that originally the committee started off with a bang and you know had all these ideas that was going to go talk to this person in that department and these people and those people, but then somehow they stopped. <coughs> and I know that there was some resistance from the other departments, you know, through word of mouth or gossip or whatever. There was you know all kinds of stuff going on. But that doesn't mean that you stop thinking about options. So I feel that the com ESS committee should continue to try to meet and discuss options because they never did. They just put all their, ball, all their eggs in one basket and that was it. And um, I, just, I just think we could have done a lot better. Yeah, I think with the um, continued conversations, we, we might want to revisit the uh, makeup of the committee, you know. Uh, but it's, again, that's a separate issue. On this particular item... If I can okay. comment, I don't think the ESS committee dropped the ball, and I do think they had the options that were available to them, and those were the options that were available to them. Um, not liking the outcome is different than not liking what they did. Uh, I was at every ESS committee, I was involved in other various meetings, um, you know, to the point that Linda made uh, and that Jeff made, uh, the options were put out there and your options were either to continue to engage with Sandra Fell, which is the only major agency that showed any level of interest to engage, hire a part-time chief, uh, hire, rehire a full-time chief, or uh, privatize. Um, as the district manager, I'll tell you, I, I have a very, very hard time and a lot of concern with the notion of bringing in a part-time chief. I have uh, uh, even larger concerns with replacing the chief position altogether into a full-time capacity given the size of our district and I think what we all recognize the long-term future of this fire department needs to look at in consequence and, uh, and evaluate. I, uh, from a operational administrative side, I, I do believe that Santa Fe is a good option. I think it's good for our employees. I think it's good for our community. I think that it will do, uh, I think it will be a successful relationship in that level. Um, I'm not wild about the cost. I'm not arguing any of the equity concerns, but I think to say that the ESS, the ESS committee did what it could do. Um, and I think, again, the, uh, the work of the committee versus the outcome of, the, of what that work entailed um, should not be confused with each other. Um, I think they did what they could do. They came up with the options. And unfortunately, at this point in time, this was the only uh, uh, one of the only options truly realistically and practically available. Uh, um, and that was when the committee kind of stopped, when it became very clear that we're not going to have a bunch of different things and ideas to look at and put in front of the board. Um, um, I would like to say, 
I mean, I don't want to just drop my comments as negative about the committee. I also want to say that I think it's going to work out really great because right now the shared services agreement works out wonderful. The firefighters know each other, they worked with each other, they've gone on strike teams together, they borrow trucks, they borrow para we borrow paramedics, um, San Rafael knows our area, they are going to be extremely beneficial, especially with the paramedics. So personally, I think it's a good thing, and I really am glad that we're finally going through with it. 100 grand a year, I think it's worth it. Um, thank you, Linda. Stephen, um, last comment? Oh, two more. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, I think um, that what's the expression, fortune f favors the bold. I think, um, unfortunately, we've been an easy, uh, an easy mark. We've been taken advantage of as a community. We don't, we pay for paramedic services as er pointed out earlier, but we don't actually get what we, we uh, put into the kitty. We, in the shared services areas, we, most of our calls are in San Rafael. There is absolutely no reason to give us a good deal. I mean, $98,000, um, maybe that's a, you know, maybe that's a bargain because they could probably ask for more. Until such point, time, that we have actual credible alternatives. In my view, Marinwood is an, not a, uh, we're an acquisition target. And what do I mean by that? At some point, we are going to have more than likely, in my, my view, a single uh, countywide department. Um, there will be a merger of sorts. And there will be a top dog someplace uh, within the fire agencies and that one of those uh, agencies could be could very well likely be San Rafael. San Rafael should be coming to us. We, we just need to completely flip this flip the the uh, the table here. And I think you mentioned privatization. If we have to go that route, we have to put together a credible alternative. Ultimately, I think our firefighters will be in better shape if they're part of a larger organization, and Marinwood would still receive excellent uh, quality services. It would just simply be more efficiently deployed, and we wouldn't be paying three quarters of the, the tab for uh, San Rafael. So I agree with pretty much every comment here, but including Linda's, that we need to continue to work on possible solutions. I just think that there's not enough out of the box thinking here. You need you need you need a negotiator to really uh, drive this. Thank you, Stephen. Um, um, trying to not drag it on too much longer. I appreciate the I agree with the sentiment of the board. I, I regretfully recall that the same type of um, tenor of uh, motion to to to. Um, sign up for the uh, shared service agreement last time uh, occurred four years ago. I mean, equally, uh, it was a bitter pill to swallow in the sense of, um, you know, the history and the terms. I, you know, going back um, to my long experience, as you probably know well of trying to deal with that issue um, while on the board, um, uh, you know, the, the, the Injury of the uh, of the removal of the f of the funding that used to be in place is still smarts uh, extensively and and uh, um, you know it was only for kind of the hard work of the board at the time and the chief at the time that we barely were able to scrape by the special tax um, measure to um, offset what San Rafael had done to us and we did manage to kind of um, uh, level the the, uh, the ship. Uh, kind of on our own terms at that time. And so um, I guess where it leaves me personally as a resident is that I, I hope the board continues to, um, to, you know, to search hard for some other alternatives. Um, it's, I, I fully understand uh, Eric's points. I fully appreciate the Chief's uh, you know, work that's worked with him. I remember years ago um, convening with the Chief's health a session amongst um, the county, San Rafael, the supervisors, um, 
I sat in the room with the chief with, and, and, and said, uh, you know, is there some kind of way that we can work towards uh, an all-county system? I was looking at other counties and their models, and, and it wasn't anything that was going to be easy. It was anything that was going to happen over a, of a short period of time. This was a, let's have a 10-year, let's have a 15, let's have a 20-year plan. What, what can we do towards that? And I, you know, it, pretty much it was the issues of the, the differences in, in revenues, the differences in unions, the differences in, uh, uh, you know, in all sorts of ways that conflicted and, and uh, uh, worked against that idea, even getting it off the ground. So unless that idea comes from a political pressure from the outside, I don't really see that being something that uh, you know you should continue to bang your heads against. But. Um, you know, it would be nice to think, and, and it'd be nice to look at the, the models, you know, in, in other areas. I will say, on a positive note, that Marinwood, um, you know, what we have been able to gain in terms of e efficiency at, for our CSD as a as a fire department over the long term has has been due in large part to Tom Roach and what he's done uh, as in, in, in to the level of degree that he has served. In, under the terms of agreement and the cost of agreement, uh, the pay that he's received, all of those things that he's provided, I think this just you know underscores what a great deal he has provided for this district, and, and you know we all wish him well. And um, it's it's unfortunate that, that his his leaving um, you know kind of uh, put, puts this issue really out there and, and, and you know makes us try to find something some tenable solution um, that we. We can no longer sort of rest on on, on his uh, good graces. So, um, thanks, Chief, for, for doing that for us. Thank you, Bob. Um, that brings us to formal vote. Um, all in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. 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 Motion passes, and so. We